Hi girls, hope everybody's doing well. So today we're going to look at a mandatory experiment which is found in the organic section and um, it's to extract clove oil from cloves by a process called steam distillation. And I suppose we all probably came in contact with cloves before. So they're used for flavoring meats such as ham and they're also used as a pain reliever. So if you've got a toothache um, if you put a bit of clove oil onto the toothache, it'll actually numb the pain. Okay, so um, that's what we're going to look at today. So learning outcomes. So first of all, we'll define steam distillation. We'll describe each step of the process and explain then why steam distillation is then used. So you'll find this in your chemistry live book on page 402 to 407. There are two main sections for this experiment. The first one is to extract the clove oil from whole cloves by steam distillation. And part B then, we isolate the clove oil from an emulsion of clove oil and water by a new process called liquid liquid extraction. And we do this using cyclohexane, which is an organic solvent. Now, the name for clove oil is called eugenol. And an emulsion, ladies, is a mixture of oil and water. So your clove oil and water. And it'll be like a milky, cloudy colour. So what is steam distillation? This is your definition. So it's, uh, it's used to separate and to isolate compounds at, at temperatures below their decomposition temperatures by bubbling steam through the material, and in this case it's clove, the cloves, and distilling off the immiscible liquids. Now, immiscible liquids are liquids or substances that don't, they don't mix, such as oil and water. They are immiscible. So your diagram uh, is like this in, this in this slide. So you've got a hot plate, you have a steam generator, and coming out from the steam generator is a safety tube to allow gas to come out. You heat up the water and it's going to be past the gas or steam through a steam trap. And the steam trap prevents the flask from filling with water. It'll be passed then into your um, round bottom flask with your whole cloves. And you have your Liebig condenser, Liebig condenser set up that the water goes in at the bottom and out at the top and then your milky emulsion so your milky emulsion of clove oil and water is collected into your small graduated cylinder so that's what it looks like there So I suppose, um, why was steam distillation used instead of heating it directly? And this is a really important point because the plant material would decompose at a high temperature and we don't want that to happen. Now steam distillation is used because some components of clove oil have high boiling points and this temperature would damage the molecules in the oil. Some organic compounds are immiscible with water, so they do not mix. And these compounds have a low vapor pressure. After mixing with steam, the mixture will distill when the sum of the two vapor pressures reaches atmospheric pressure. So your method. Step one. Whole cloves and water are going to be placed into the flask. 
with the steam inlet dipping into the mixture. So you're placing your cloves into your round bottom flask and your steam inlet mixture or tube is placed then below the water uh, in your cloves. Water is placed in the steam generator, which is this over here. This is your steam generator. And you're filling it up with water. The bung and safety tube are attached. So this is the bung. And you have your safety tube coming out. The safety tube should be below the level of the water, which it is which prevents pressure buildup or an explosion. So you don't want it to explode if the pressure builds up. And the steam generator is heated for about 40 minutes. What you will observe after 40 minutes or so is a colorless liquid water collects in the steam trap, which is that middle part of the diagram. A milky colored liquid collects in the graduated cylinder down the bottom here. So that's where you're going to get your milky emulsion. And an emulsion is a mixture of clove oil and water. And a steam trap is needed to prevent water condensing in the flask with the cloves. So the product is a mixture of clove oil and another name for clove oil is eugenol and water. These which we highlighted already do not mix, they are immiscible and an emulsion is a dispersion of small droplets in one liquid in another which it does not dissolve, so it's not soluble. The clove oil is extracted from the emulsion by solvent extraction, which is part B of this experiment. And you're going to use an organic solvent called cyclohexane. This here is the structure of eugenol, which is your clove oil. Now you'll be asked to get the percentage yield. It's a nice basic calculation. And a new formula is grams of the product divided by the grams of the reactant given multiplied by 100. So typical example, an exam question. In a steam distillation experiment, 20 grams of plant material, which is your cloves, was heated in the presence of steam. Only 0.25 grams of pure organic solvent was obtained. Calculate the percentage yield. So you write down your formula. Grams of the product divided by the grams of reactant. Grams of the product in this case was 0.25 grams. Divided by the grams of the plant material, 20 multiplied by 100 which will give you 1.25%. And that's how you get your percentage yield for this experiment. So if you could try this task, just four questions in relation to it. This is typically how it's asked. And then once you're finished, um, flick on to the slide for part B of this section. So part B, it's called solvent extraction of clove oil. So what we want to do here is we want to isolate clove oil, which is called eugenol, from an emulsion of clove oil and water by liquid liquid extraction using cyclohexane. So the clove oil is extracted from the emulsion using again liquid liquid extraction, also known as solvent extraction. 
It's a technique in which two miscible liquids, so your clove oil and water, are separated using cyclohexane, in which one of the components of the mixture has a higher solubility than the other. So here you've got a separating funnel. Your organic layer, which is cyclohexane, is on top. And your aqueous layer, which is the water, is on the bottom. So cyclohexane is added to the emulsion. This dissolves the clove oil. That's really important. So cyclohexane will dissolve only the clove oil, but does not mix with the water. A separating funnel is then used to separate the organic components from the water. And the organic solvent then evaporates, leaving the oil behind. So step one, clove oil and cyclohexane are added to this separating funnel, which is this apparatus here. The organic layer, which is cyclohexane, floats on top of the aqueous layer, which is the water. And the reason why it floats on top is because cyclohexane does not mix with water as it's non-polar. Cyclohexane floats on the water as it's less dense than the water itself. Step two, the funnel is stoppered, shaken back and forth, so back and forth, and the tap is opened so the tap is opened in order to release the pressure of the vaporized liquid. So shake it back and forth and open the little tap to release any pressure. Step three, the separating funnel is reclamped using your retort stand and the aqueous layer, which is the bottom layer, is allowed to flow into the beaker. So soon as you, as soon as the level of water goes into the beaker, close the tap so that the organic layer remains inside. The washing and separating steps are repeated three times. So do this three times. And you'll notice that the emulsion becomes less milky each time. Step four. Anhydrous magnesium sulfate is then added to the mixture until clumps of magnesium sulfate form in the conical flask. Magnesium sulfate is a drying agent and the mixture is filtered into a clean dry conical flask that its mass is known. Cyclohexane is used to remove any traces of oil or magnesium sulfate from the first conical flask. So pour in your solution, your cyclohexane solution from step three that contains your clove oil. Add magnesium sulfate to it until you can see clumps of it inside the conical flask. And he's gonna absorb any excess water and he's a drying agent. Filter it, so pour it into your um, filtered paper, and it's really important that the filter paper is fluted, so it, it's basically folded back and forth until it's nicely fluted, and you'll notice that magnesium sulfate clumps remain in the filter paper. And all that comes out is cyclohexane and clove oil. Step five, the mixture is then heated in a water bath in a fume cupboard and cyclohexane, which is volatile, evaporates. So we just want to get clove oil on its own. And again, here you can see some other benefits of clove oil for teeth infections, skin care, relieves stress, headache, earaches, and so on.
And this is just a little summary of part A and B. And again, just a summary of all you need to know for this experiment. Okay, it's a spider diagram. So this is all you need to know for your exam. So I'd like you to try um, a couple of exam questions, 2018, 11 and 8. And can you write up this experiment into your lab note copies and make sure you draw your, your diagrams for both part A and B and include also the sample calculation for percentage yield. When you finish your exam questions, can you please upload them online, ladies, so I can see and um, that they're done and clear up any misunderstandings. Thanks a million. Thank you.